It is time to take a look at our tale of the tape for this fight, brought to you by Bud Light, the beer you can always count on. Casey Johnson has height by one inch, weight is pretty much even, and the reach also favors Johnson. The biggest difference in this fight, Javier Obregon has 27 pro fights compared to Casey Johnson's seven. Let's find out how this all shakes out as we go back inside the cage with Britt Salbert. Ladies and gentlemen, our co-main event this evening is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the Front Street Fights Bantam Weight Division and is brought to you by Drug Shield, the exclusive drug testing and MMA licensing company for Front Street Fights. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner to my left, with a record of six wins against just one defeat, standing in at five feet five inches tall. He weighed in at an even 135 pounds, fighting out of Middleton, Idaho, proudly representing Frickland MMA. Please welcome Casey Wildstyle Johnson. And fighting out of the red corner to my right, with a record of 13 wins against 14 defeats, standing in at five feet, four inches tall, weighing in at 135.4 pounds. Fighting out of Fort Worth, Texas, representing Fitness Fight Factory, please welcome Javier El Crote Obregon. Our referee when the action begins is Tom Sutnet. Tom, fighter's instructions, please. Okay guys, I want you to follow my instructions at all times and defend yourself at all times. Touch them up. Get ready, ladies and gentlemen. Fireworks expected early in this fight between Javier Obregon and Casey Wildstyle Johnson. Our co-main event is underway. Denying the glove tap is Casey Johnson. Like Going Casey for a high kick right off the bat. Threw a slap there. A lot of speed, both of these men very quick on their feet looking at Javier's last couple fights. He's not afraid to stand up and bang. He's got some pretty quick back and forth action, able to dip, dodge, dive and duck. <laughs> I tried to go for that, I don't know if I missed it, but uh, both men feeling out right now what the other one wants to do. No one wants to make that crucial first mistake. I'm interested to see, you know, Casey's been working a lot with his, oh, that was a good, leg kick and Casey even kind of shook it off a little bit. Johnson slips and falls there. Obregon giving him a second to give back up. Good recovery by Johnson there as we've seen in past fights how a mistake like that can cost you everything. Nice. Take Double leg takedown there by Casey Johnson. Of course, no stranger to wrestling. Very storied background does Wild Style have in the arena of wrestling. So Obregon had the butterfly and elected to, to take out the butterfly hooks. As long as Casey keeps his forehead under the chin of Obregon, uh, he's got a better, better chance of not being elevated. And here you have a front choke. It doesn't look like it's a whole lot. Oh, he's leaning the body weight down on that right now. Uses a right knee. Casey Johnson backing up against the cage. Can't tell if it's locked in. Single leg takedown there by Obregon. Johnson doing a good job getting back up. Double leg takedown by Obregon. Getting Johnson to the back. Great. Good job by Obregon. Good job, and he's got re really good uh, uh, position right here with Casey's, uh, with Johnson's back to the cage. And uh, once again, as I said last fight, you know this is the beginning of the round. They haven't built up a sweat either one of them, so it it's favors the grappler in the early minutes of the first round, especially. Two minutes into round number one of tonight's co-main event of Front Street Fight 16, presented by BonnieBuilding.com. You can see Obregon on top right now with the El Coyote trunks. Johnson on the bottom in the white trunks. And in that last exchange there, where Obregon was going for a front choke there, really good job by Johnson to, to not panic. Mm -hmm. and, and even in that last exchange there, calm, cool, collected, right out the storm, and to figure out what his next move is. Yeah, you know, he's really, really good. Uh, he's really hard to choke, especially with a front choke. You know, Casey did a lot of uh, Greco wrestling, and, and those guys have a really good uh, choke, front choke defenses. And, you know, so all through his... Uh, formative years as a wrestler in high school he, he was you know I think he was better at, Gre at Greco as I understand than he was at freestyle so so that lends really well to shirking off those front chokes 
Two minutes, five seconds left in round number one. Obregon with control has Johnson backed up against the cage. What will Johnson do to get out of this position? Will he be able to get out of it? And what will Obregon do to keep the control he seemingly has right now? Obregon's working kind of a, almost like a can opener, uh, you know, bicep controls. And so, you know, he's kind of susceptible to get underhooked right here, but, um, but Casey's, you know, Johnson's head is in the cage, so kind of nullifies his hips. And this close guard isn't that beneficial for, for Johnson because uh, he needs to maybe think about uh, putting his feet in the hips and pushing him away, getting some space, rather than just taking punishment and letting the, uh, the judges, uh, you know, points kind of rack up against him for this first round. One minute, 10 seconds left in round number one. Johnson still pressed against the cage. Obregon finding some elbows, finding some fists. Somewhat reminiscent of Johnson's last fight with us. Cesar Sclavos doing pretty much the same game plan. Keeping him pressed against the cage, keeping on his back, throwing the fists and elbows when he can. One might think that Obregon may have watched that film. Yeah, possibly, you know, but you know, as you remember, uh, Sclavos had a lot of the uh, mount position in a lot of that fight so you know Casey's got a you know good enough guard he's at a, at a high high enough level where he can kind of understand this but you know it's kind of the old adage you got to give the other guy credit too it's not that Casey's doing anything wrong it's no the absolutely other guys, not you got the guys doing re really well you know Obregon's just you know kind of controlling and here you, you might have some of the advantage you see the advantage playing out of having 27 fights to his record you know, Casey, getting on a hip is actually what you want to do, what he was just previously doing. If you want to mount an escape from your... Left over there by Obergon in the final 10 seconds of round number one. Another left elbow, another left elbow. Swing and a miss there by Obergon as round number one comes to an end in our co-main event. A lot of action early on in this round between both gentlemen and Casey Johnson and Javier Overgone down on the ground for the better part of two and a half minutes as we get ready for the Project Filter replay brought to you by Project Filter. You decide when, we'll show you how. Visit projectfilter.org. A lot of good flashes by both the men in the first, uh, first round here. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, here you see the high kick and I think, uh, yep, that one landed and, you know, he had another slip and fall, but he puts a lot into those punches and, and that's why I had the slip and fall, which means nothing. Um, but, you know, I, I would say on the feet, advantage from what I've seen. What I see from Casey Johnson is he had better takedowns and he had better uh, better uh, stand-up as opposed to Obregon's ground game was looked like it was far more superior. You saw the double-A takedown there right there. Of course, Casey Johnson, a uh, high school wrestling assistant coach. I want to say Caldwell, but don't quote me on that. Uh, maybe Middleton. Middleton? Maybe. It could be Middleton as well, too. Either way, a high school wrestling coach, you saw a lot of the defense that he had there. Uh, very, very exposed in that, or ex expertise in that as we come into round number two of our co-main event. Inside kick there by Johnson. Another. Inside leg kick. Nice Johnson. overhand right by Johnson. Seems to have more powers, what I was kind of speaking to with his punches. Good there. overhand right there by Johnson. That rocked Obergon. He has it back against the cage. Johnson looking for the guillotine right now. Does he have it locked in? He's got Obergon pressed against the cage. Is this one going to be it? Does he have it locked in? It is hard to tell from our vantage point. Referee Tom Sutton is looking. Does not appear he has enough to end it right there. However, going straight to the single leg takedown is Johnson. Oh. Obregon did a nice job of, of creating a reversal out of a bad position. You know, he was pretty co cool, calm, and collected. He was doing the right things, defending that, that guillotine. And I was kind of surprised Casey didn't, uh, Johnson didn't turn it to what we call a power guillotine, which is you switch the, the, the hand that's kind of assisting the, the choke and you kind of push up with it. It's kind of a famous one that uh, Scott Jorgensen's kind of, you know, had success with in his career from Boise. Um, but... Obregon pushing Johnson and back up against the cage right now. Back to what we saw at the end of round one. Really putting Johnson in a position where he's going to have to exert a lot of energy to get away from the cage and get off his back. Oh. 
see, this is not where you want to be. You need to get on the side like he's doing. And let's see if he gets his, gives up the back position just to try to get out. Obregon trying to get back mount, not able to do that, not able to get the hooks in. Johnson again with the great defense we saw in round number one continues here in round number two. And what you saw, you know, Casey's defending, was defending that. It looks like he's going for a Kimura on the other side. Take down by Obregon. And uh, he didn't get taken down on the first attempt because he had a nice real wide base, but then that's what that's the danger of going for a submission, especially that Kimura in that position is you kind of give up your underhooks, you give up a lot of your pummeling abilities when you go for a sub, you know? And so when he latched onto the arm, what happened was he fixed himself to, to Obregon. So that's why it makes it easier to get taken down from that Kimura. We mentioned earlier on, we tried to figure out what school it was that Casey is a high school uh, assistant coach at. It is Columbia High School. Oh. I knew there was a C in there somewhere. I just didn't remember where it was. <laughs> assistant know coach at Columbia High School. And I grew up here. That's okay. I grew up here, too. I can't yeah. remember half the street names in the Valley. Well, they have, like, double the high schools now. So. That, that's true. Because you're old. <laughs> er than me. Two minutes left in round number two of our co-main event. Obregon, again, what we saw a lot of in the first round, we're seeing a lot of in this round. Obregon keeping Johnson pressed against the cage, really making work for it. And I'll, I'll say this, it seems to me, Mitch, that we're seeing a lot more activity out of Johnson. While he was in this position in the first round, we're seeing more from him in this second round. Yeah, you know, I would say that, but, um, but uh, he's on the defense, and, you know, if the judges know what they're looking at, you know, they're, uh, he, Casey can't escape here. Obregon's dictating where that goes. So even though he's more active, he's a better, um, uh, better in this position than he was against Scalabo. So he learned, he adapted, he evolved. And he, Johnson you know, throwing a couple of elbows right there. We're seeing the strikes come the fist and the elbows from both gentlemen at this point. Obregon runs a risk of putting his hands up there, you know, because number one, he controls the wrist of those gloves, especially when they're sweaty. Number two, Casey can climb a high guard and potentially armbar him. And Casey can't armbar. Obregon looking for a couple of hammer fists as we come up to the final 60 seconds of round number two of tonight's co-main event. Again, Obregon trying to get that back position just like last time. Johnson doing a good job standing up, not giving up that back position. And you see the little bobble there from Obregon. Well, that's because of the sweat. So that's what I'm talking about is, you know, when you point out the, the thing that they're more sticky, then you also have to point out, you know, this is a good time to point out that that's why he kind of wobbled and he get, didn't get that Good hard position. take down there by Obregon. And see, Casey's doing some really good elbows, you know, but once again, wh what did the judges see, right? The judges just saw a takedown happen. So hopefully he can kind of shift it and make a case for himself. Final 10 seconds left in round number two. Great defensive work by Casey Johnson in this round. But again, you know, you're kind of alluding to it. What are the judges seeing? Are they seeing complete control by Javier Obregon? Or are they seeing, while he may have top position, Casey Johnson really doing some good yeah. defensive work from the ground yeah. as we get ready for the Project Filter replay brought to you by Project Filter. You decide when. We'll show you how. Visit projectfilter.org. Huge right hand there coming from Casey Johnson, Rock and Javier. Yeah, here you see this uh, this front guillotine, power guillotine is a lot of times what they call it with the back and the fence. And But Obregon keeping his left arm high, that's a good defense. And here's the Kimura where he attaches himself and he goes for the arm, but then what happens is now his upper body is fixed to Obregon's upper body. And it's easier for him to put his feet underneath him and lift, which is exactly what you saw. Obregon using his strength right there to get KT Johnson back down to the cage, similar to what we see right there and again, a lot of the same we've seen from Javier. Obvious he wants to keep Casey on the ground, knowing that he may struggle with that just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but definitely, you alluded to this as well earlier. He looks a lot better in that yeah. position than the last time we saw him. So yeah. paying attention to that very well. And of course, in his corner right now, the current Front Street Fights Bantamweight champion, Vince Morales. So definitely a good person you want to have in yeah. your corner as we get ready for this third and final round. A lot, of, a lot of fighters sometimes, you know, they've been in this game long enough. You know, Casey's been in long enough. You know, it, it, some fighters cut easier than others, um, especially when they've been cut before, severely lacerated. Those That scar tissue is easy to open up. And, you know, Casey's had a lot of blood, right? Um, especially been, that last and fight. And he's been cut even when he wins. And so, uh, as you see, you know, it's really anecdotal, you know, measuring a fight success on blood. But 
Casey nice Johnson with a good right-left combination. Not letting Obregon out of this one. Going for the single leg takedown. Kind of a mismatch there, mixed match right there. Obregon trying to lock in a guillotine. Johnson able to slip out of that one. Just 40 seconds into this third and final round. See if he sits a down lot for of the back guillotine. and forth action. Johnson trying to lock in a guillotine right now. Has Obregon pressed in a good position for him. Hard position for Obregon to defend right now. Obregon's right shoulder is, is penetrating forward into the choke, which is exactly what you want. You want to make your neck bigger and not smaller. All right, Casey's doing a good job, and you know he's got four minutes. And again, this round critically important for both fighters, but again, for Casey Johnson, as we have talked to, how did the judges see the first round? Of course, mm -hmm. the third and final round, if this does go the next three minutes and 38 seconds, very important for Casey to show more control, uh, obviously, than he did in the first two rounds. Yeah, so what, what I was saying about the cuts. Oh, Good push the off there by Obergon, but gives up that back position. What can Johnson do? Is he's not cut like before, you know, when he was on the ground against Scalavos, right? So Casey's look at his face, you know, he's not cut up, and that, that speaks to his defense of, you know, ground and pound defense within this closed guard. So, so that's what I was, I was trying to say until I got interrupted by several exchanges of awesomeness. I wonder if we're going to see hashtag exchanges of awesomeness at some point on the TV screen. Casey's doing a good job threatening this uh, almost like a face crank. Uh, and he's doing good swimming. There you go. This is what Let's Casey see, Johnson re out. needs right now to show that control that he has. Obergon doing a good switch through. Able to start throwing a few hammer fists, a couple of elbows at this point. But Casey Johnson doing a good job through this first half of the final round really laying in control now we get to see if he can get out of this position as Obergon tries to lay in a crucifix type position Johnson able to spin out of it he gives up the neck again Obergon going for the back a lot of switches by both gentlemen right now let's we'll see if Johnson is able to buck him off coming forward the only way that would be possible is to his right towards the center of the, the cage Obregon able to lock in one hook, trying to get over the body, get the back position, get both. Johnson doing a good job of closing off the legs as we come down to the final minute 45 of tonight's co-main event. Obregon looking for a single leg so, takedown. Can he get the position? So Casey needs to, instead of draping his body over, he needs to start making space in, in Obregon's, like, let's say, left ear, making space from his body. He's got a nice wide stance, but if he's able to cross face with his left arm and start to make space separation, that's what he wants. But, but leaning, draping his body over, it's easier to that stuff to happen. It's, Obregon could stay closer. You can hear it. You just said it. His corner just said it. He has got to get separation. Johnson doing all he can in this final 63 seconds of our co-main event. What is he going to be able to do? Can he escape the clutches of Obergon? Armbar attempt. Let's see it. Trying to lock in that arm bar on Obergon. Can he extend the position? No, Obergon doing a good job getting out of that and getting back to the mountain position where he's been the majority of this fight, throwing a couple of hammer fists. Guard position. <laughs> Guard position. <laughs> yeah. That's why you're here. No, it's all good. 25 seconds left. Obergon just trying to throw in those hammer fists and maybe hammer home a victory for himself tonight. Several left from Obergon in the final 10 seconds. It looks like our co-main event tonight will be going to the judges. It is. Now the question becomes, how did the judges see this one tonight? Yeah, you know, uh, you never want to leave it in the hands of the judges. However, uh, I think for sure, you know, he got the, fir the first two rounds go to Obregon. I mean, not for sure. Yeah. But the way I scored it, 
the first half of this round it was Johnson and the second half it was Obergon. As we get to the Project Filter replay brought to you by Project Filter, you decide when, we'll show you how. Visit projectfilter.org. There was that early, early flurry by Casey Johnson, exactly what he needed to open round number three after the first rounds. Did a really great job through the first half of that third and final round. Right. Casey's doing a really good job we call it this hand fighting. You know, he's switching back and forth, kind of trying to touch that foot. But instead of throwing that left leg over, Obergon was savvy enough. And once again, that's not necessarily Casey's mistake on that one. It's just Obergon's good, right? And it's the experience. Again, yeah. 27 pro fights versus seven pro yeah. fights. You know, again, yep. you can never, one thing you will never ever be able to do, no matter how you feel about Casey Johnson, like you said about Shelton, he is never one to back away from a very tough fight that is always respectable and always applaudable, no matter how you feel about Casey Wild style Johnson. Absolutely. As you can see, a lot of expected excitement maybe from Javier Obregon's camp. Yeah, they think they have it clinched up, and, you know, I'd, stranger things have happened, but I think they've, you know, got <laughs> we, a reason to celebrate. We've seen it in this cage before. Again, yeah. you know, and, and that's what I know Todd Carlson tells all the fighters and, and their managers tell them you never want to leave it in the hands of the judges because it just depends on how the judges see anything on one particular night. You know, we've seen stranger judges' decisions. We've seen majority decisions yeah. when it, it shouldn't have been majority decisions, split decisions. We've seen it all. Uh, again, it really just depends on how the judges see it on one particular night at that moment. Right. You know, we'll we'll, uh, we'll see. But the judges have all been on point. I mean, they're always, you know, for the most part on point. But, you know, there has been no surprises tonight. So, you know, I expect that, you know, it's going to be three rounds. And uh, there was no, in my opinion, you know, uh, an egregious uh, uh, discrepancy between, you know, like to, to warrant a 10-8 round. So, you know, it's probably going to be a, you know, nine to nine to ten, nine to ten, nine to ten, and you know, uh, type of uh, decision. Cage announcer Britt Talbert getting the final tallies on the judges' scorecard. He appears to have them. We are going to make this one official. Is it going to be unanimous? Is it going to be split? How does it go? Let's find out as we go back inside the cage with Britt Talbert. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the judges' scorecards, how about a nice round of applause for these two warriors here tonight in our co-main event. <laughs> Emptied the tanks for sure. We'll go to the judges' scorecard. Judge Laz Martinez scores this about 30-26. Judge Tim Turner scores it 30-27. Judge Scott Marker scores it 30-27. We have a winner by unanimous decision, fighting out of the red corner, Javier El Coyote Obregon. Well. Got a swag bag here from our friends at bodybuilding.com. Have a quick word here with uh, El Coyote. You come up here from Fort Worth, Texas. You know, you talk about a good road win in sports. This was a good road fight. You did what you had to do. You kept the pressure on with a very heavily uh, favored local guy with a local crowd. Javier, your thoughts on the fight? Yeah, I came here on a short notice and uh, I knew he was tough, so I was just trying to play it smart and I get caught up with anything. I wish I could give you a better fight with my stand up, but I got the win on that, anyways. So, what did you think of the production? What did you think of the folks here in Boise? How was your visit here to Boise? Obviously, walking out with a win, but what are your overall thoughts, Javier? Oh, man, I love Boise, beautiful town, and uh, I hope they can give me back. You got people watching on YouTube. You got people watching all over the country. Uh, who do you want to thank here tonight, Javier, before we let you go? Uh, I want to thank my coaches, uh, Johnny, and uh, my coaches, uh, Darwin, and at home, and my family, my kids, and my whole team, and uh, Todd for having me on the show. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, he came from Fort Worth, Texas to fight here tonight. Javier El Coyote Obregon. Nice job.